Hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's episode of Lodestar's Lending Leaders. We have a great guest today, Josh Pitts, CEO of SHRED, which stands for Show Up, Hustle, Repeat Every Day. Uh, so SHRED Media, Josh is a returning guest, had a lot of fun talking to him about all things social media, ways companies can think about getting themselves out there. So today we're excited to continue the conversation um, with a little bit of a different twist. So Josh, thanks, thanks for coming on again. It's always fun to talk to you. You know, Joe, I'm just kidding. I had to say that now because we were people. I don't know how people call you Joe. It happens like, that's way just, more than you think. That I don't just know makes why I've talked laugh. to other gyms. It's a thing with them. <laughs> I don't know if it's an Italian last name thing and like everyone assumes Joe, there's going to be a Joe, but. Well, well no, in all honesty, I'm so excited to be back with you, Jim. It's always yeah. a good time. I have so much fun when I'm here and I love what yeah. you're doing. You're so brilliant. This podcast in particular is one that I listen to. And, and I mean that like a lot of people ask me like, what podcast do you listen to? And there's a plethora of them out there yeah. and you do such an incredible job. So huge kudos to you, to your team and everything you're doing with the Low Stars Lending Leaders. It's absolutely brilliant. So well, I appreciate brother. it. You're uh, being on your show and seeing what you've done before before I started, it was really an inspiration of like, hey, this is actually fun. Like you can do this in a way that's authentic and, and fun to talk about stuff. So excited to have you back on and, you know, always like to see you out there. One thing I've noticed um, too recently is I can't go on Instagram without seeing Shred Media these days. <laughs> I feel like there's a lot more of you guys there than there was when we talked back in May. Um, like anything you do with social media, I know it's intentional, but like, what is the, the thought behind Instagram now versus, you know, some of the other outlets we've talked about in the past, like LinkedIn. Yeah. You know, Instagram is one of those. I've always been a huge fan of Instagram. It's where I spend a lot of my time. If you go and look like on my, if I, you know, tracking your apps and tracking how much time you spend, I like Instagram. That's the way I think that's the way I really like to consume my content. So me and my team have put a lot of emphasis behind not only the Josh Pitts live brand, but shred media's brand. Um, and it's just, and again, I always tell people, you you definitely want to find the platform that you're most comfortable with. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't say Instagram is my most, like my most comfortable, but I enjoy it. Like I said, if I'm just going to go scroll through something, like I'll probably scroll yeah. through Instagram. I might maybe face Facebook. Facebook's probably at the bottom of my list right now. I think Facebook is still very, very relevant. Don't get me wrong. But if I'm want to go like, again, this is for me, this is Josh Pitts talking. When I want to consume content, it's either right now, especially that my top three, Mm -hmm. are YouTube, Instagram, and Twitch. Like, and I know people are like, Twitch, like that's gaming, but there's a world of Twitch in particular that you can reach tens of thousands of people, especially even talking real estate. But yeah, Instagram, we've just put a lot of emphasis out there. There's a lot of people within our industry, um, you know, kind of moving over towards that. Uh, mm -hmm. We're seeing a lot more of an older demographic being involved with Instagram. A lot of people, you know, they thought it was just for the influencers or the people who wanted to make themselves look pretty, but it's just a place to really share, I mean, photos. And, and not only not just photos, but videos too. And it's a place for more curated content, if you will, a place to really kind of showcase, you know, a little bit, a little bit higher. Um, instead of just going to Facebook live, I still think Instagram reels is, is absolutely brilliant. And, and, uh, doing these quick shorts is, is awesome, but I, I just enjoy Instagram. So that's why you've seen a lot more of us there. We've tried to, we really try to have at least two posts a day on Instagram, which may seem like a lot, but to us, that's kind of our focus right now. And to your point, it seems like the content there is a little bit different with the shorter videos, with the kind of the more, you know, curated quotes and things like that. So yeah. It's, it's, it's well, it's just, it's aesthetically pleasing as well. Like again, <laughs> look through Facebook and you know, again, just, just the whole flow of Facebook and people will argue this well, like, Hey, Facebook owns Instagram. Yes, you're correct. But just the platforms they're designed in a way to be different. Like they're designed. Mm -hmm. Instagram really is trying to keep your attention visually. Facebook is still like you, you can be rewarded for longer form content on Facebook, but Instagram is for that, like that quick hit. Like if you're on Instagram, go right now and like, just scroll. You're not reading the, like you're not reading so much in depth every once in a while. Like I'll click on somebody's commentary of their post, but it's mainly, I just want to see a video or I want to see, you know, what, what post Jim's making or what posts, yeah. you know, low stars making. So I just kind of scroll and kind of see that. And, I, and then right now that's, I enjoy that. And I tell people this all the time. You have to enjoy, you mentioned this, you, you have to enjoy what you're doing with it. If you're not enjoying social media, if you're not enjoying creating the content for those platforms, it's just another, like, it's another task for you. It's one more thing that you're just like, no, do I really have to do that? So I enjoy Instagram right now. Yeah. There's definitely um, a more entertaining content. I know one of the um, 
accounts I followed recently is it's like real estate fails or bad real estate picks. Nice. So like it, they like basically showed like a picture of a house on Zillow um, with a living room. And for whatever reason, Osama bin Laden was on the TV. And like, that was what they posted like on Zillow of like rent this house or buy this house or something like that. Or like you see houses, especially like apartments in New York where like the, um, the like shower is on top of the kitchen sink. Or like oh, 100%. Like so those, just those things are really fun. Um, but it, it's definitely a different intent than when you're going on, on LinkedIn. Um, Absolutely. One of the things we talked a lot about last time was kind of the ROI of social media of you know, how do companies look at it? How do they get started? You know, what kind of demystifying things like views aren't the most important thing at the end of the day. Um, you have to look at, at things other than that. Um, and so a lot of what you've been putting out there is about a personal brand. So companies doing is that's one thing, but if you're you know, a loan officer, if you're a realtor or just even kind of someone more on the operation side and executive why should you do a personal brand? What is the point of, of doing stuff yourself in a business capacity? Oh man, I'm excited to talk about this probably more than anything right now because this, this is so relevant in our world because we're all humans. Everyone like Jim, you, me, like every single, every person listening today, you are a human. We are human beings. So a personal brand, and I want you to think about this in a way, I talk about this a lot, is there's a big difference between the word brand and branding. They're two very, very separate things. Your brand is what people say about you when you're not in the room. The, your mm -hmm. brand is that connection, that relationship, that trust, that confidence that people have in you. Branding is a logo, a slogan, mm -hmm. a that, that. That's what branding is. So don't confuse the two. But your personal brand is more important than ever because you do have to compete with the, the Zillows, the Redfins, yeah. the Rockets. Like You have to compete in that world. And it, we're talking social media, that space is so loud. It's so noisy. And those companies are spending tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars to put their brand ahead of yours. So mm -hmm. if you're not out there putting your personal brand out there, connecting with your audience, staying in front of them, I mean, this is a legit statistic. One of our clients, um, and we, we had them on the show talking about this recently, is 18% of, of originators, is, is there was 18% retention in our industry last year, 18% retention. That mm. number is shockingly low. Like, I'm just like, no way. Like that can't, that number can't be legit. That's in terms of what? People who've stayed at their company? No, the 18% retention of clients coming back to the same, like uh, client retention. So if, if I'm an oh, originator okay. and I do a deal for somebody, the, the chance of them coming back is it's 18% across yeah. the board. That's, wow. that's broker bank. And I'm just yeah. like, eight, that is such a low number. Like, yeah. and that's, that's average, Jim, which is, again, that's baffling to me. That means you have less than one in four people coming back to you. Yeah. And I'm just like, whoa. So how do you start to combat? Like, how do you start to get that up? Like, how do you get that number higher? How do you get to that 25%, 40%, 50%? How do you get that retention? Because all of us are thinking there's, they're like, no way. There's no way those numbers are correct. And after I heard that number, Jim, I went yeah. back and I looked at like, again, people know that I don't originate, but I went back and looked at, our portfolio as a mortgage company, I talked to a few of my really good friends in the mortgage industry said, Hey, can you pull a report and just to see, you know, the last couple of years, what retention has been for you. And it was legit. It was really close to those numbers. And I'm like, Holy crap. So this idea of creating a personal brand, so many people think they're like, Oh, well, I don't want to create, like, I don't want to have to be the face. I don't want to have to like, Hey, look at me, look at me. That's not what this is anyway. The conversation that you and I are having, this is building both of our personal brands because yeah. this is going to be turned into a podcast. This is going to be heard by people, possibly seen by people. Mm -hmm. This is helping you and I get more recognition, if you will. And not in a way of just like, look at me, look at me, look at me. Yeah. But our conversation today is creating value. What we're trying to do with our clients is create that value create that personal brand. So anytime, so if they're watching the Super Bowl and they see a rocket ad, they don't think of rocket. They think of Jim. They're like, Oh, right. well, of course, like Jim's my trusted guy. Like he's my, he's my trusted voice in, in mortgage. He's my trusted voice in real estate. Or That's even better. Hey, I wonder what Jim thinks about this commercial. Let me ask him. Bingo. Yeah. Like they, you're, you're all, 
All you're doing is creating that trust and confidence in front of your consumer's eyes on a long term. That's what your personal brand is. Don't overthink it of like, you need to put on this act. You need to become like this, this influencer or this YouTube star, if you will. You just need to create content. You need to be putting yourself in front of your audience on a more frequent, a more consistent basis, creating value for them. That's, that's really what a brand is all about. I know one thing that has never happened to me um, since I started this podcast in January is someone says, hey, Jim, nice podcast. Let me buy a calculator from you right now. Right. Right. That's just not going to happen. That's just not how it works. And I think a lot of people, you know, there's kind of this mythical world of all inbound leads, right? Of like you, you put all this stuff out there and you'll never have to ask for business again. You'll never right. have to go out there. And no, more people will come into you. I think, you know, there there is a changing. I think the way I like to think of it, and this is probably a nerdy example, but, you know, water at room temperature, there's going to be some amount of water that evaporates and boils, right? It's just, it's just natural. The more that temperature goes up, the more of that water is going to keep evaporating. So all you're really doing is slowly turning the temperature up on the people who engage with you, the people who talk to you, the people who contact you. Um, So it's just about kind of warming up kind of that group of folks out there because the reason you have 18% retention is no one knows what you do. When I was in the title business, um, I hated deals coming in from friends. I was also frustrated at myself at the number of people I knew who didn't quite understand what I did in the first place. And I don't know if you had kind of an equivalence of that in the mortgage space, but it was it was always just something that kind of stuck in the back of my head. Of that's really more my problem than than theirs. No, I agree, and it's it's interesting that you say that because we always like want our our friends and our family to be our best referral sources. But yeah. almost everybody that I have ever known in the in mortgage, real estate, title, insurance, whatever it may be, is like working with friends and family is so like, it's difficult. Something always goes wrong. Relationships yeah. are always strained. Like they always want a deal. They always yeah. like, and so it's just like, eh, it's one of those very like fine lines. I think there's very few people who have found like a, a really like perfect way to do it. I mean, it's business when you come to it, no matter what we say. And it's really funny that I'm even saying this because I had this discussion with somebody else this morning Mm -hmm. is, you know, as mortgage professionals, of course, we want to, you know, help, help the American achieve the dream of home ownership. Like that's, that's what we're trying to do here, but let's just be freaking honest. Like let's cut down to the, like the brass tacks here. We're all in it for money. Like we have to support our families. We like, we have to, you know, support our, our, our family and the, and the people we care about. So it, it's just a fine line of like working with friends, family. And, and, and again, when it comes to a personal brand, talking about this, kind of wrapping that into it is like you, your friends and family, they, they pretty much trust you. It's getting the people yeah. outside of that sphere to continue to trust you, to have confidence in you. And the only way you can do it is, is on a grand scale. Unless again, you're like you said, going back to the whole leads game, unless you're going to call people that's dude, Jim, imagine that. How difficult is that? Like to just randomly call people and just try to convince them why they should trust you, why they should make the biggest purchase decision of you in their entire life. Why would you not put out content? So instead of you trying to call them, they see something of you, they see it on Facebook, they see it on Instagram a couple of times. And like, this gym guy seems like a pretty good dude. Like, it seems like I would connect with him on a personal level. Like, it's just so much smarter marketing than it is to like try to pick up the phone and dial somebody. Or even if you're still dialing, even if you're still reaching out to them, you're doing it after you've exchange five messages online. You're doing it after yeah. they've liked a bunch of your posts and commented on it, right? There's just, it's it's not a cold lead anymore. And I think yeah. that's that's kind of a, a big part of it, but that's something that it takes a while to get to too. Um, oh. And I know one thing that I, I struggle with on my end, especially on, on LinkedIn is I look at my posts and a lot of them are just promoting content. It's mm-hmm. look at this content. We did this weekly post. You know, I had an awesome post with Josh Pitts, an awesome podcast. You got to listen to it. Um, but I do less and less non-pitching. I do less and less personal too. So in building your personal brand, what is that balance? I know a lot of people don't like putting their personal life out there, you know, but how how can you do that? Or what would have you seen work? Man, this is the million dollar question because like you said, for everybody is different and it, and platforms are different too. Yeah. Uh, I was talking with a, a very, a very <laughs> large CEO of one of the biggest mortgage companies in, in the mm-hmm. country last week. And him and I literally were having this discussion yeah. is, you know, Josh, it's hard on LinkedIn, especially to like make a personal post every once in a while I'll do it. But 
it's not well received. You know, LinkedIn is looked at as that professional platform. Yeah. So posting a picture with your dog or with your family is kind of like, it's kind of like, uh, should you be doing that? But who's, who's to make the rules on that? I always tell people, if you feel comfortable to do it, like who, like maybe you have a few people that don't like it. They don't enjoy it. But for the most part, I've, I've done this personally. We've done all kinds of tests ourselves. Yeah. They get engagement. They get people talking because again, now you're humanizing your brand. It's not business all the time. Mm -hmm. It's not like, Hey, let's start this. Let's yeah. start this promoting our podcast. This it's like, Hey, check out Jim with his, you know, he, he went and spent an incredible weekend with, you know, his wife, uh, you know, having dinner. We're all humans. We all eat dinner. Yeah. We all enjoy the finer things in life at times. Like, and and again, if it's all business all the time, I tune people out, to be honest, because yeah. I'm just like, well, they're, you know, that's all it it's, is to Jim. It's all it is to Josh. Yeah. Well, then even if you're not necessarily posting a picture of you and your wife, is it, you know, an article you read? Is it an insight on the industry? Some of my most engaged Bingo. posts were when I was moving into a new office. And you can see behind me, I have an army of little stress balls that I get from conferences. There's a awesome. similar one. So I took a picture of that and it was... 2000 views, which is more than I, I get in most, um, in most posts, tons of likes, tons of engagement, tons of people making comments about it. And sure, it was kind of work related, but it was just like, hey, like, look at the stuff I have in my office, right? And I did a couple of other of those. So now it's like, how do you work that in, in a way that is authentic and also that you want to keep on doing. Too. Well, let's, let's, uh, let's dive into this a little bit. Cause yeah. you literally just hit something that is like literally so brilliant. And when it comes to personal posts, it doesn't have to be you with your wife. It doesn't have to be you with your kids. Some people think right. they're like, well, I want to make a personal post. That's what it has to be. No, you made a personal post about the tchotchkes you have behind, like the yeah. little freaking stress balls that you pick up from the, the events. Like that's yeah. totally cool. Or if you read an article or if you see something that you're like, Hey, this, this inspired me. That's why a lot of times I just do my show by myself. Cause I'm going to, to talk about, maybe I read an article by Gary Vaynerchuk and I'm like, Hey, I want to dive into this myself. Mm -hmm. Like that's a personal post. That's not, it's adding value. I'm sharing something that I, that, you know, I'm excited about that. I'm passionate about. Yeah. So that is a personal post. So don't think that you have to, you know, go out and take the selfie with your family or whatever, uh, yeah. or you at, at dinner with whoever to be a personal post. Now I think, and I'll say this, I think coming up, you have uh, event season and conferences right around the corner. And, and, you know, of course, everybody to their own extent with the whole COVID thing going on, it's, you know, how much you travel, but I think posting other pictures with other professionals from around the industry saying, Hey, you know, I learned this from Jim. Jim was on stage and I learned this from him. Don't just take pictures to take pictures, but share a little bit more, especially if we're talking LinkedIn here, share mm -hmm. a little bit of insight, like, Hey, Jim spoke about personal branding on the stage. And, you know, here's a picture with him. And I, I really enjoyed this. Go deeper into it. Don't just take a bunch of pictures and be like, Oh, you know, I had a great time. Well, lots of fun. Give share perspective on what you actually were doing at that event. Yeah, I've noticed that about myself um, now that there's been more conferences going on that anytime I see a picture of a conference, I'm, I haven't been to a conference in a year and a half. So I'm just looking, I'm like, oh, where is that? Who's there? What's the crowd looking like? Like there's definitely a little bit of a, like a voyeurism around it right now. For sure. Um, trying to figure out, you know, what all of that looks like. Um, you know, one of the things too, once you're, you know, you're posting, you're, you're putting stuff out there regularly, the next step is getting folks to engage, right? Because a bunch of views are one thing, but if you have five views and then a bunch of people commenting, you know, you're going to get deeper connections through that. So what, how do you get that engagement? How do you nurture that engagement? Um, how do you get people to you know, comment on what you're doing? Oh man, th this is the, this is another million dollar question. How do I get people engaged with my posts? I, the consistency thing is the biggest thing. Mm -hmm. And then you get, you do have to kind of play with your content a little bit. What are people wanting? What are you seeing other people comment on? What are you seeing other people engaging with? Create content around that. Uh, again, don't just create a post to create a post. Have really have some intention behind it. Like, like we're talking about here. Don't just throw up a post because, you know, you've heard Jim and I talking about that. You need to have content on social media. You need to post on LinkedIn. You need to post on Instagram. Don't just throw, throw up a, a post to say you have something up there. Think about it. Go and like I said, find something that intrigues you, take a spin on it or make your own, you know, post from it and go out there and post it. That's, mm -hmm. I, that's how you really, that's how we get engagement. So to your point, you sharing those, you know, those stress balls behind you, I've got some really fun. Like if you look up behind me on my shelves, I've got all kinds of different things from different conferences. So mm -hmm. now I'm thinking like, Hey, that's a fun post. Yeah. Like I'm going to get, I'm going to get a bunch of my collection together. I'm going to take a picture of it and I'm going to share like, Hey, what's the favorite, you know, what's your favorite 
uh, Chachki, whatever they call them these days. Chachki, I know Chachki is an old term. What, what's the favorite swag you've got from an event? Yeah. Like, what's the favorite swag you got? Yeah. I'm going to make it a post. And I guarantee you that's going to make some good engagement. That uh, even just having that conversation with you gave me the idea too, because right behind me, it's tough to see that's Darth Vader. So I'm going to take a picture of that and then see what other like kind of somewhat nerdy art people have in their office for their engagement too. So that was my post idea. There you go. See, yeah. and it's just listening to things like this. It's looking at what's out there. It's seeing what people are engaging with. It's yeah. funny because I'll, I'll, I'll talk to somebody, especially when it comes to like the marketing departments that we work with, is they're like, well, what do you think is going to be next? Like what we're trying to find the next big idea. And it's like, guys, ladies and gentlemen, the next big idea has already been done. It's just going out there and recreating it. Like right. just go out there and put a little spin on it, make it your own. That's the best way. Don't, don't try execution, right? Like exactly. Yeah, you know what's a great idea? Flying cars. Yep. Am I the first person to have that idea? No, no. Anyone pulled it off. No, no. Bingo, dude. That, that's a great example of it. Yeah. So. I think that's the sassy example I get sometimes when someone says like, what's the next big thing? Or what are you working on? Or it'd be great if you could do this. I'm like, yeah, this would be great too. But that doesn't mean, you know, yeah. it's, it's going to happen. I'd love so, a, I'd love a flying around, hoverboard. Yeah. Right. Right now we're back to the future over here. Bingo. Love it. The, um, when you were on, um, when we were talking back in May, um, you were saying that during the pandemic, you kind of, the beginning, at least, you expected a content explosion, right? You expected a lot of people to be um, starting podcasts, starting blogs, posting a lot more, creating their presence. And at least at that point, it didn't seem like it had really happened. Um, you made the comment that there's just a lot of, it was a very busy time in the industry. Um, certainly still is in that regard. Has that changed, you think, in the past? Has there been anything about this past year that's kind of surprised you for better or for worse? Not uh, for worse. Like I was really hoping even from our last discussion that I'd see more people get engaged, more people, more companies, more just people individually getting involved, putting out more regular consistent content. And to be honest, I, I continue, I seen a more of a decline. Like yeah. I just see fewer and fewer. And, and when I say this, I mean it in the aspect of companies creating original content. Mm -hmm. I see plenty of companies throwing those those addy type, like, Hey, you know, we just got this new product up or we just did this. And like, kind of like, Hey, yeah. look at me, look at me, which when I see those posts, I'm just like, that's the best you could do. Like, yeah. that's like, it's There's just going to be a place for that. But also if you have a lot of other content, it's only going to make that easier. A hundred percent, dude. And I tell companies and I, and we've been very fortunate to work with some incredible companies and, you know, it's a lot of fun to work with the companies that we do, but it's just that there's a time and a place for all, for, for any type of content on social media. And it just makes it that much more organic. And it makes it that much more genuine when you actually have content that is connecting with your audience in a, in a, yeah. in a genuine way. So I think, I honestly think it's sad because I haven't seen, and to be honest, um, this, this hasn't been bad for us, but we have more clients reaching out to us than ever trying to start a podcast. Like, yeah. and not only do they want to start it, but more often than not, they actually don't want to start it. They love the idea of a podcast. They love the idea of getting this content out there, but they don't want to do it. They don't know how to do it. They don't like, they don't even want to go down that road. So they're just like, Hey, you know, just do it for us. or just help us with it. Like, so I, it's, it kind of has been for me, it's kind of like, man, there's still such a missed opportunity within our space. Like I, I still think there's so many people and so many companies and organizations that are just missing the ball still on it. Mm -hmm. And it's tough. You're never really going to learn how to do that until you try. Bingo. Like yeah. you, you did it, man. Like you just started it and look at all the things that you've learned in just the last few months and starting the podcast. Yeah. I think it, it's interesting though, because it's still like, you never see an immediate uptick, but you, it, it's the benefits kind of come in unexpected places. Um, when you're, you know, I was interviewing someone for a position and she said, oh, I heard about the podcast that you, I listened to the podcast that you and your co-founder did. I really like, you know, what your company stands for. She made a joke about my co-founder mentioning t-shirt guns. So I knew she listened to the podcast and like just having something out there like that before someone wants to work for the company is so powerful. Oh, um, big time. And I think really good. Or I was talking to a partner and um, she was complimenting our content and she said, um, you know, it's just like you guys put so much out there that it seems like if you're not working with Lodestar or partnering with them, you should be. And I was like, you, you got it. Like, that's actually, that's a takeaway. So Jamila, if you're listening, thank you very much. Uh, for that insight. But uh, so it's, but it's tough. I think it takes time to get there. And one thing that 
I still struggle with, and I'm sure a lot of companies you work with are the same, is it's fun to do this, right? It's fun to do a podcast about Zillow or Airbnb or any of the other things we cover. But then when you actually get into a client conversation, they're not, the the buying decision isn't going to be related to the podcast. It's going to be related to an ROI. I'm selling a calculator at the end of the day, an ROI um, functionality, how we're fee mapping within their LOS. So how do you like justify the two? Because in my mind, it's like, this has nothing to do with our product. So like, is like a X, you know, top 20 mortgage company going to care about any of this stuff? And I still have that question in the back of my head. See, and I, I think that's most companies do is they're asking yeah. themselves, if I do this podcast and do the number of calls that we get from companies saying, well, you know, we did this, we, we did two podcasts and we only got 10 people listening to it. So we're yeah. done. And I'm like, you did two podcasts and got 10 people. Like that's 10 people. Like you should, number one, like that's the start. You've got to start somewhere. It takes time. Yeah. So many people. And the, uh, the biggest mistake I see is like, oh, well, we went and bought this audience. And I'm like, Oh, you bought an audience? Like you cannot buy an audience. Number yeah. one, like they, and Hey, I'll, I'll admit this. We've tried that in the past. We, we tried going down that road and it bit us very, very hard. And I'm the first person to say, never buy an audience because it's never who you really want to connect like trying with. trying to buy mortgage leads, right? Bingo. Like, yeah. it's like me, you yeah. might get a couple in there that are like, Oh, I'm going to go listen to this show for a long term, but you just got to start. You got to continue to do it. Right. And with time, this ROI mentality, Jim, has to go away. Yeah. If you're if you're in marketing and you're thinking about content, podcasting, a show, mm -hmm. creating value, it's just gotta. It is a labor of love for the first year. Like you just gotta continue the grind, the hustle, the you yeah. gotta shred. Like literally, like you yeah. literally do. And eventually, if you're putting out really valuable content then yeah, you're going to start seeing results. You're going to start seeing people talking about you, people sharing your content, people being like, man, Jim's a thought leader. Like this yeah. is a really good discussion he had with whoever. So it just takes time. Yeah. Number one, most underrated thing in this industry is patience when it comes to creating content. Or about anything in general. Yeah, that too. Yeah. Um, what was that you just reminded me of? Um, so you mentioned buying an audience, right? So what's your approach in terms of ad spending to drive traffic to that podcast instead? So, you know, you have content out there. Are you or your clients spending money to push folks towards that content? Yeah, of course. I, but here, I'll, we'll go down this road real quick. Yeah. If you start spending money, especially on ads, you have to be ready to continue to ad spend. Uh, yeah. This is factual. Like you're, you're hearing it from me from somebody who spends, you know, thousands of dollars on Facebook ads, LinkedIn ads mm -hmm. is once you go down that rabbit hole, you have now killed your organic reach. Mm -hmm. You have to continue to pay to play. Facebook has admitted this. Like right. if you start to spend um, promoting content, creating ads, you will have to continue to do that or your audience, like your audience, your engagement, everything drops off. Wow. So I tell people like, don't go down that rabbit hole. Just create content to create, like just start. And then there may come a time because the worst thing you want to do, Jim, is if, if you, your very first post, if you go out and boost and create an ad out of it and you get a bunch of people running over to you and you don't have the best content, you haven't been doing this. You don't haven't, you don't have that learning curve. You're not like, you haven't, I don't want to say perfected the game, but you haven't improved your game. Then mm -hmm. people are going to be like, well, I'm here. There's not much from Jim. Like he, like yeah. he made one cool, you know, ad that got me here, but there's not a lot here. So I'm out. And now you lost somebody forever. So that's the problem with ads too, is you better be ready to see an uptick. You better be ready to see some new eyeballs. If you're going to start ad spending, whether it's on YouTube, Facebook, right. LinkedIn, Instagram, whatever it is. So if you're going to go down that rabbit hole, be ready for it and be ready to continue to spend. So, mm -hmm. so yes, we do. We do do some ad spending, some, some sponsored content, some boosting of content. Um, but that's just because again, we, we went down that rabbit hole and we, we still have like our podcast, like the actual, like, uh, on Spotify and everything. We've never boosted it. People can't believe that people, we've never tried to boost a podcast. We've never tried to do anything in regard to that. And our numbers are, are, are awesome. That is a perfect example of organic, like true growth. So it just, it just depends on what your goals are too. If you want to, if you're a company, I always tell like a lot of companies, yeah, it probably is the best to maybe target some originators or target, you know, 
whoever you're trying to hear or whoever you're trying to get in front of. But for the most part, if you're just an originator and you're trying just to get in front of like your local community or your state, cause that's where you do business. Yeah. There is absolutely no need to be boosting content mm -hmm. until you've been doing this for at least six months. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great. That was something I've you know been, been thinking about, but it was good to get that insight there. Yeah. Um, last question I have for you. Um, cause time always goes too fast when we do these time flies. Uh, we have fun, man. 2022. What do you expect? What, what's kind of your, your outlook going into the year, man, I think 2022 is gonna, and I'm going to, you can quote me on this. I think we're going to see a lot of change. I think we're going to see a lot of disruption in the space. Mm -hmm. uh, I see what, what is happening in tech. I see what's happening in the world. Uh, and I, and I mean this of, of blockchain, um, and people think I'm crazy about this, but I think the world of technology is advancing in such a quick yeah. way. And I, and again, I'm not trying to scare anybody, but I think, I think 2022 will, will bring some new players to the game. I think will some, some players who have been here for a long time are going to have to evolve or change, or they're going to get left behind in a dramatic right. way. I think I really hope, and this is me like hoping and praying, like if you're an originator, if you're if you're in any type of like capacity to drive your brand as a company, you should be really like start right now. It's what September. Uh, we're going to the fourth quarter of 2021. You need to be thinking about content. You need to be thinking about how you're going to separate yourself from the masses because this shift that I'm talking about, the people who separate themselves are the ones who are in front of the audience, whether you're B2B, whether you're B2C, it doesn't matter. You need to have a very, very structured uh, content like strategy moving forward. If you don't, I promise you, and I hate saying this, but you will get left behind. You mm -hmm. absolutely like, there's no, there's no more contemplating or questioning Jim is, is it is social media a positive ROI? Of course it is, yeah. but it has to be something that you're doing consistently. It's have to, it has to be something you're creating value to your audience with. So 2022, this is the year where we will see the, and I hate this, saying this, the rich get richer and the poor get, and I mean that in a, in a perspective way of like, if you're an originator doing the right things, if you're a real estate agent doing the right things, your business is going to grow. If you're not, you're going to start to get like, you're going to start to see a decline this. And it, and you, you kind of mentioned this earlier, but 2020, 2020 was a banner year for refinances. 2021, there were still some refinances, but we're moving back into a purchase market. And if you're not differentiating yourself, there's no more of like, I have the best prices. I have the best service. Like yeah. that, that crap doesn't fly anymore, Jim. Like That's you, why have you get 18% retention because if Bingo. someone's making a price decision, they're just going to go to that lowest number. That, and that literally, if, if all you talk about is price, you yeah. are never going to, can you, you can't win the game long-term Yeah, flat out. So mm -hmm. 2020 is, price is unimportant. I mean, I personally no. hate competing on price. I understand that affordability is always in the back of everyone's mind, but the longer you say you're the cheapest, you're the cheapest. It's a race to the bottom. Bingo. There you go. You know, do you fly the cheapest airline? I usually <sighs> don't. I usually I, don't pick the cheapest flight. Heck no, I'm not getting on the cheapest airline. Like yeah. I fly Delta and like, if you've ever flown Delta, like it's not, it's not definitely not the cheapest. You know why I fly it? Because I fly the experience. Cause I, and, and also I know I can count on them when things go wrong. Like I've had plenty of things go wrong on Delta, but yeah. they've always made up for it. Is that, again, there's no plug for I don't, Delta. I look at minimal time, no connections. Yeah. I'm like, what gets me there in the easiest way? Yeah, because time is money, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Like, and and that's just it. To your point, Jim, Delta's yeah. a hub here. I get direct flights almost anywhere I want to go. I I would rather pay an extra two hundred bucks to go and save me from having a layover and jumping planes. Saves me an extra three hours, four hours. That time, like that time is that's that makes me more money than anything in the end. Yeah, at least makes you more sane. Well, hey, always a great time having you on, Josh. I really appreciate it. Um, if you all listening are not following Josh, please find Shred Media wherever you are, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook. Check them out. It's a lot of fun. Thanks again. Thanks, Jim. Thank you for listening to Lodestar's Landing Leaders. I'd like to give a special thanks to Brian Rieger and Elena Gardner who help us create this podcast every week. Please remember to like and subscribe the podcast wherever you listen to it. It helps us a lot. Thanks. Talk to you next week.